اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد في الأولين وصل على سيدنا محمد في الآخرين وصل على سيدنا محمد في الملأ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين ما شاء الله لا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لسان يفقه قولي جعل الله أعينون بعون الله وكونوا عونا لنا بالله السلام عليكم يا شيخ الله الفائز الثاني السلام عليكم يا شيخ محمد ناظم على الحق يا شيخ محمد هذا رباني اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الحمد لله we are coming upon a a very blessed time a very special time we are entering the uh, we are really in the month of Hajj in the months of Hajj as the Holy Quran state states الحج أشهر معلومات. حج is months, not days. There's a specific few days where the the rituals of Hajj are performed, but the actual Hajj month starts right after Ramadan, from Shawwal on. And most of us are not taught the significance of Hajj besides visiting Allah. لله على الناس حج البيت من استطاع إليه سبيلا. That Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has decreed that it is one of the faraid every human being must make Hajj if all uh, the conditions are met in terms of in terms of the financial ability and in terms of their health and nothing is stopping them. If they don't do it, they are basically in sinning. If la سمح الله a person has many uh, years uh, available to them where they can go and make Hajj and they decide by choice not to do it and they pass away before they do it then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may forgive or may take to task it's his it's his to judge uh, judgment but they are basically liable and um, so um, if you haven't made Hajj as soon as coronavirus allows it, <laughs> you should go make, make Hajj <laughs> if you're able to. Don't delay. Uh, young people, doesn't matter. Make it a priority so that you're not, you're not exposing yourself. But the Hajj, the meaning of Hajj is, Hajj is, we said earlier in Jum'ah, the meaning, the literal meaning of Hajj uh, is maqsad, is al-qasd, is to make something your aim, your goal. That's the Arabic meaning, uh, linguistic meaning, if you want to say it. And it is one of the few ibadat, the only ibadah really, where a person must have tahrir al-maqasid. You must, you must know why you're going. You must have a right goal and aim. You can't just perform it. Uh, so you, you must distinct, distinguish because the practice itself was something, you, you may sit, if you like to sit more comfortable, right? also on this side. Yeah, it's easier. اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد. So the the idol worshippers used to make tawaf and used to come to Hajj and they used to do the whole shaair Safa and Marwa and they used to sacrifice. The same exact, the appearance of the shaair is the same exactly the same as we do, but they were worshiping stones. But the difference was their maqsad, their maqasid. So one goes there, what is your aim when you go there? And Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, there are levels of uh, niya and maqasid. So a person might go, they want to visit Allah's house. And it is Allah's house is is a structure. If your maqsad is the house, what is your maqsad? Or the owner of the house. So 
Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu arda, he said to Sayyidina, he was, he was making tawaf and he says that I know you're a stone and if I didn't see Prophet وسلم, kissing you, I would not have kissed you. And Sayyidina Ali was behind him and Sayyidina Ali said to him, because he says, أَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ لَا تَضُرُّ وَلَا تَنْفَعُكَ You don't benefit or you're just a stone. But I saw my beloved Prophet وسلم, kissing you. If you see the act itself from outside, a human being kissing a stone, what does that mean? But Sayyid al-Mursaleen wa Imam al-Muttaqeen was seeing the reality of that stone and the reality of who put that stone there and what he deposited in that stone. So Sayyidina Umar said to Sayyidina, Sayyidina Ali said to Sayyidina Umar, بَلْ يَضُرُّ وَيَنْفَعُ Actually, it does benefit and it does harm. Because on the day of judgment, this stone, Allah deposited your... Uh, the, in, the entire nestle of Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam's uh, covenant and ahd when they say Allah said Alastu bi rabbikum am I not your lord and on that day we said yes you are our lord bala all of us acknowledge say, our our lord on that day in that stone that record of that acknowledgement and ev and everyone that said bala is in that stone registered and as soon as a person goes there and kisses that stone what happens your covenant that you are have been true to your covenant in dunya that stone becomes a witness to you so does it benefit or or harm it does so we do it because our prophet did when Shaitan refused to make sajda to Adam. He refused. He refused to make sajda to another abd, okay? But he refused it because he not because he didn't want to worship Allah, but he refused it because because he thought that that servant he's, is is less than him out of arrogance. But the point is that is he refused an act that he deemed not right and went against Allah's command as if he knows better. In Hajj, we perform an act that looks on the appearance of it as if we are doing something against Tawheed as they call it today. The understanding of Tawheed as if we are going against you're bowing to a stone or you're kissing a stone or you're making a tawaf around a structure uh, doesn't look right but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command is that we perform this ritual for his sake it is similar to that act the angels were not looking at what Allah was asking them to do. They were looking at Allah's order and they fulfilled it. As opposed to Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, Shaitan. Why I'm bringing this, this intro is because we live at a time where that maqasid is no longer important or deemed important. And Muslims are judging Muslims based on the appearance of it. If they see us do an act out of respect for somebody, they accuse you of shirk. If you, they see you uh, honoring Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, they say Tawheed and shirk. And wholesale Muslims now are being thrown out of Islam because of the appearance that they may be doing something against Tawheed in the minds of some people. I remember one time, uh, Habib uh, al al Maliki, they had a conference in, in Saudi Arabia. And back in the days 
when they were very powerful, uh, those people. And one person came on the stage and he was talking about the Sufis and uh, how they worshipped the graves and how they uh, uh, almost worshipped their sheikhs and this and that. And he's talking about the new Wathaniya, the new idol worship in Islam. And so Al-Habib, uh, mashallah, <laughs> he was very, yani, uh, inspired. So he, he went on after him and he says, maybe nobody told the, our brother, maybe he is mistaking, he made it, he's mistaking, mistaken that the tawaf around the house is idol worshipping and the kissing of the stone is idol worshipping. Uh, maybe nobody told him that these were ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that person was standing and yelling, no, that's not what I meant. That's not what I meant. I, I was meaning the, the worshippers of the graves. He's saying, we, we, we make tawaf around the structure. Is that idol worshipping? So when a person stands in front of a grave and raises their hand, is that idol worshipping just by doing it? That's the time we live in. What is important in those days is to understand that we have to purify our maqasid. Some Ahlillah, they were considered always in Hajj. Why? Because their maqsad is Allah. In Tariqa Naqshbandiya, in our uh, the Silsila, the goal of the Murid is to reach a state of Ilahi Anta Maqsudi wa Ridaqa Maslubi. My Lord, you are my goal, and your pleasure is what I seek. This is a very high and lofty goal. And it requires a lot of struggle, a lot of sacrifice to reach. And uh, يعني, if Allah gives tawfiq to people. But we have to try with the time allotted to us to understand that we were not created. Allah gave us the maqsad of our creation. What is the aim of our creation? Is to worship Him, to know Him. That's it. Everything else is a sideshow or anything else is the sideshow. Besides this purpose and goal, nothing else really uh, is of importance. If we miss that goal, if we come through this life, we don't know our Lord, we don't worship our, our Lord, we have wasted our lives. And if we come to this dunya and we don't attain anything of mata al hayat dunya we don't get good jobs or good livelihoods or whatever people are seeking, but we leave dunya knowing who Allah is for knowing our Lord and worshiping Him. Our aim, we have gained everything. That is the reality. Nobody now wants to hear this, that you have to live for Allah. That's the reality, that's your Lord's well, you, you, everything else should be secondary. But in order to do that in dunya, you have to first tahrir al maqasid. We have to make our maqsad every day when you wake up to say, Ya Rabbi, this day I am dedicating myself to you. My intention is to be for you, to worship you to know you, to do everything pleasing to you, stay away from everything that's not good for you, that you don't that you don't approve of. I am weak, you are able to make me that, that type of person. If we make our intention sincere, and if we make our aim, our himma for that, then we are putting ourselves in a very good place. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may one day accept that niyyah from you and make it a reality. And you find yourself from those sincere ones. But if we don't make that aim, if that's not even in our goals, and not in our five-year goals or 10-year goals or 20-year goals or retirement goals, it's not none of it. We're living for what? 
if you look everybody's lists of priorities and what they want is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rida pleasure with you on top of that list if it was then we'd be always in hajj because the awliya what is what made them awliya and what is the sign of their awliya is they're always their maqsad is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything they do everything they do they is Allah happy with me is this pleasing to my Lord is this something acceptable to him and if your maqsad is always like that then you're in hajj because hajj is al-qasd if Allah is your maqsad at all times, you can you can be wherever you want and you're always making your tawaf around what? Your heart is always making its tawaf around your Lord. And those are the Ahlillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us to be with them, to be like them, grant us to follow their example, inshaAllah. Grant us to be accepted in those 10 days if you if you can fast in those 10 days or give charity or or uh, help somebody or uh, do anything good inshallah may allah accept from you and grant you and grant you your loved ones also acceptance and happiness wa min allahi tawfiq bi hurmatil habib bi hurmatil fatiha